This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Oishi stopped the car at the place where we were always waiting for wait where we always waited for Mion. Come to think of it, I've never been to Mion's house before. Is that her house right here? Because it doesn't look very well guarded. I've only heard that it's right down this road. その先本家は自宅周辺に監視カメラをかなり配置しているらしいんですよ。でも、ご安心。何度か資格をついて突入できる位置に若いのが何人か待機してます。試行性マイクで中を伺ってますから、お二人が大きな悲鳴を上げて
Mion didn't seem at all surprised that visitors arriving in the morning, which wasn't a normal time. In fact, she almost seemed relaxed, as if she knew we were coming beforehand. <laughs> Palm sweaty mom spaghetti! Mion smiled lightly, in the way that the Mion we knew always did. She gestured for us to follow her. I hesitated for a moment, looking at Rena. Rena smiled cheerfully, as if she were passing through the gate of a good friend's house, and then did just that. I rally myself and then go for the gate, too. On the other side, it hadn't been maintained very well, but it was clear that the lot was magnificently wide. It wasn't quite what you'd think when you hear mansion, but it was very clearly a vast place. Mion smiled dryly as she said that, and then closed the gate and relocked the heavy bolt. Maybe it was my imagination, but I thought I saw the hint of a shadow in her smile. I love how they're making it, everyone's acting like nothing's wrong. It's building the tension. Mion bowed to us like a worker at a high-class hotel, and then pivoted on her heel and began to walk. Rena gripped my stiffening arms lightly. That's right. When I get nervous, I tend to let everything show on my face. I'll stop tensing up. Even if something were to happen, there were two of us. Uishi-san's subordinates were waiting outside the gate for us, too. There was nothing to worry about. After thinking about it that much, I realized my nervousness was already gone, and I laughed at myself. We're actually seeing new stuff now. There was a pile of newspapers on the floor of the entrance, and there was a large rock on top of them. I didn't understand why something like that was here. Paperweight? Rena noticed me looking at it questioningly and giggled. レナは知ってるのかこれは何だ何かのおまじないかケイちゃんがよくわからないならそれをどかしてそこに靴を脱いでもいいんだけどケイチくんその石の真上にねツバメの巣があるのあ、本当だ<笑><笑> Well, if you don't bother it, then that lets them know it's safe. Yeah, you don't want bird poop on your shoes. I couldn't help but laugh at the silly contrivance. My laughter naturally spread to the other two. Maybe this is the real Mion. Maybe this is the real Mion and she's innocent and it's Shion who's behind everything. I thought Shion may be offed Mion and replaced her, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> The inside of the house wasn't very bright at all. My gosh, they've lit it, got a literal river going through their backyard. It was dimly lit, in fact, but mysteriously, I could still feel an elegance to the place. Mion seemed to want a more modern building, but traditional houses like this aren't bad either. No, it's, it looks nice. That would suck. Ah, 
でも雪下ろしは大変かもね雪下ろしは大変ってそんなに雪が降るのか日南沢は井戸は関東より南なくらいだろここいらって暖かい土地なんじゃないのか<笑>ケイチ君知らないの日南沢は豪雪地帯なんだよ Yuck! Oh no! Never be go never going there. 大雪が降るとみんな埋まっちゃうの。玄関なんか埋まっちゃう時もあるんだよ。止めた車が完全に埋まっちゃって見つからないことだってあるんだから。Oh, that sounds horrible. I wasn't aware of that. Himizawa, was that bad a place in the winter? Come to think of it, my dad. He said something like, this place got plenty of snow so we could have fun building igloos. Still, your front door getting buried? Not being able to find your car? That's way too much snow! I know it's a real place, but <laughs> I didn't know if they were embellishing that for the purposes of the story. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Keiji. Mion laughed more uproariously than she had ever had, and told us she'd bring out some tea and left her seat for a moment. She's gonna poison us! Snowball fight would be epic with this club. Why do we always have to play punishment games? I see the terror of our club cared not for the season. The victor could be decided by who could best adapt to the winter only events. ケイチ君、罰ゲームいっぱいで、レナは負けない。ハウ?ハウじゃねえ。I <笑> Where's Grandma Oreo? The paper sliding door opened and Mion returned with a pot of a com uh, com and a complete tea set. Poison. Bean paste is not the good stuff. And with those words, the smile disappeared from Rena's face. Oh, she did it. That one careless statement reminded us of what we had nearly been able to forget. I had wanted to enjoy this peaceful time for a little longer, but we put an end to that with those honestly careless words. When she noticed the smile disappear from Rena's expression, Mion too changed hers. It was as if the cheerful air, that was like a warm spring day until a moment ago, had slipped through the cracks in the paper door, and altogether disappeared. There was no point in regretting it now. We did not come here today to chat and enjoy ourselves. Mion silently poured the tea. The ceiling here is the same as the ceiling in the, uh, sh the shed. During that time, both Rena and I sat kneeling without uttering a word. No, we couldn't even mutter a word of acknowledgement at the natural words of courtesy. I don't believe you. Mion gave a bitter smile at that and let her shoulders droop. <sighs> we all remained silent. We remained silent, hoping that someone else would speak up first. That was, however, the one thing we didn't want to do. And so we sat for a long time. 
At last, Mion smiled scornfully and opened her mouth to speak. Oi, oi. Kei-chan mo Rena mo. Gyaku wa sotchi nan da yo. Yo ga atte kitan ja nai no. Sotchi kara kiri dashite kure na kya. Oji san mo komat chao nda kedo na. Rena and I exchanged glances. And we both resigned ourselves. Rena opened her mouth to speak first, so I stopped her. ケイチ君。いいんだ。俺はくるべくしてきたんだ。俺から喋らせてくれ。うん。わかった。ケイちゃんが私に何の話かな。お宅のお嬢さんを私にください。What? <笑> That's a weird joke, Mion. Oh, oh, that's the joke she's going for. <sighs> Afterwards, I thought her mean remarks were Mion's own way of showing consideration. Mion had said those mean things in a totally normal voice, and it drained the tension from my shoulders. Mion, first, Mion pretended that she didn't know what I was talking about, but I'd clearly gotten my point across. I thought we were first going to apologize for not giving her the doll. I'm still hung up on that. I could see Mion's expression immediately become harder. I didn't know where to go. But I was just a little bit of a conversation. To display my deepest sincerity, I pressed my forehead to the table. I'd meant it as my way of prostrating myself. I figured it wouldn't feel sincere enough if I raised my head right away, so I left it there on the table for a while. Mion didn't say anything. With my face down, I couldn't tell what sort of expression Mion had. Only the voices of the cicadas filled the room. Mixed with them, I could hear the sound of a clock ticking. That was all. When I started to struggle to breathe from having my head down for so long, Mion told me to stop. I looked up to see that Mion's face was calm, but she was smiling faintly. それが笑い事では済まないと思ってる人たちも大勢いるってこと。それでいいよ。合に入りては合に従えって。昔から言うもんね。But the Romans also crucified people, so you probably don't want to go around doing that. あれからもう何日も経ってる。今更だとは思うが、謝る。悪かった。許してくれ。I could feel pitiful tears welling up within me. If I had done this sooner, maybe nothing terrible would have happened. Mion spoke like it was someone else's problem, and I wasn't happy about it. I'm glad Ren is here. <laughs> she's very good with people. Until she's not. <laughs> Rena was giving her tit for tat, so the room's atmosphere quickly began to grow sharper. She was right. Even though I came here to speak from the heart like this, it's felt like she hasn't been taking this seriously. Because I think this is Shion. Obviously, Rena isn't th fond of that. I had known it would turn out like this from the beginning. Hadn't I come here prepared for that? I mustered my willpower and bit my lip. <laughs> Do you have evidence? Take that! This game would be really interesting if we could see Cyclops. Mion was trying to keep from showing any reaction, but I didn't miss her eyelid twitching just a little bit. 
そんなに難しい話じゃないみーちゃんも見たでしょリカちゃんの部屋ミオン put a finger to her forehead and acted like she was thinking 冷ややっこがあるのにお醤油がなかったそして流しの下にあるはずの醤油の大瓶も瓶ごとなかった<笑>何それそれが私のとこへ来る理由になるわけミオンいい加減にしろお前が自分で回覧板に書いたんじゃないか醤油をお裾分けするってミオン scratched her head I heard her ever so faintly click her tongue It was as though we found out she'd purposely given a little too much, uh, given too little change to a servant. That's all I could feel from her. So, she said, Mia chan was. Rika chan was. Ki. Kakushte s h i m a t t Rena hesitated for a moment. I could feel, I could tell that she didn't want to use the word erased and that she was struggling to find another word. So, she said, 本当はそれで終わりのはずだったんだよねみーちゃんにとってはそりゃあどういう意味かなリカちゃんがみーちゃんの家に行くことをさとこちゃんに言い残していたのは誤算だったんじゃないかな<笑> okay, well, that was an unnecessarily loud breathing sound. そしてさとこちゃんはみーちゃんの家に電話をしたうちのリカがお邪魔してませんことうんきっとこんな感じ<笑>似てる似てるみーちゃんはちょっとまずいと思ったんだよねリカちゃんがここに来たことを知る人間がいたからだからさとこちゃんも誘い出そうと思った誘い出すへえどんな感じでかなミオン prodded Rena on as if trying to get to the good part of an interesting story I however knew I had been watching Mion change the whole time she was restlessly twirling her fingers she had clearly lost her calm of course it was really a slight thing and only I who had been watching her this whole time would have known Mion was panicking are we going to bring up that she called us and laughed evilly on the phone What Rena was saying must have been a bullseye. きっとこんな感じだよ。さとこ、実は今日、食事を作りすぎちゃったんだけど、食べに来ないリカちゃんは先に来て、もう食べてるよ。こんな感じ。Scratch. Mion's nails dug into her knee. へえ、電話の内容の記録テープがあるわけでもないのに、どうしてそこまで I've been wiretapping your phones. What? Hey, so, Kony, Satoko chan no tsukta, fatari bun no yu shok ga. Maru maru te tsukatsu de. Lap ni tsutsumare te hai te takara. For a few moments, Mion's face was frozen in utter amazement. She looked like she couldn't believe that this person in front of her was Rena. So, na koto de. Do ya tara den wa de shabetta na yo ma de sashi ga tsui chau wa ke. 長くなるから説明は省くけど冷蔵庫の中身がみーちゃんの呼び出した話の内容まで如実に物語っちゃってるのミオンズ jaw remained on the floor this was the only way I could describe her face これは<笑>とんだ名探偵が身近にいたもんだよまさか冷蔵庫の中身だけで電話の内容まで見破るとは。ラナズジーニアス。まいったな。まいったまいった。<笑> As if a dam had burst, Mion convulsed into laughter. Her laughter, though, definitely didn't make us want to laugh as well. <笑> Mion grew tired of her dumb laughter, heaved a big sigh, and then scratched her head. It almost seemed like Mion had lost a detective punishment game for the club or something, and her punishment had been decided. Oh, how fun that would have been if it were true. Tonda me tante ka. Mi chan ko so, oish san ga shita kaiwa no naiyo ma de yuk sashi ga tsuku ne. Oish san mo watashi no koto, Tonda me tante te itta mono. 
You've been working with the cops? <laughs> as soon as she heard Uishi-san's name, Mion's eyes began to display panic more clearly, so that anyone would be able to tell. Mion, the police Maybe we shouldn't have broke his cover like that. Mion attempted to feign calm, but it looked like she was having a hard time with that. Part of her couldn't believe that the police had had her surrounded, and she closely examined Rena's facial expression. However, she couldn't detect a hint of falsehood. Finally, Mion seemed to accept the fact that the police were encircling the house. Mion didn't answer our rapid-fire questions. Okay, Mion apparently has a tattoo on her back. Does this girl have a tattoo on her back? That's how we can verify the identity, once and for all. We can also do a fingerprint match. I could clearly see impatience in her eyes, which were still feigning calm. <laughs> She's not going crazy eyes, though. She's still very, just like, hi. This is a very normal smile. At last, Mion, who had been sitting there lazily, readjusted her cushion and sat herself upright. At that moment, the atmosphere in the room changed completely. Mion's expression also changed. The impatience and wonderment in her expression disappeared, and she became so solemn that you would think she was about to conduct a tea ceremony. I could sense it. It was now, in this moment. Mion's had ceased to be Mion, but it changed into Mion Sonozaki, the current heir to the Sonozaki house. That solemn atmosphere about her was completely abnormal, and was entirely different from that of the Mion that I knew. Now, I could believe it. Now, I could believe that she was the young leader who commanded the entire Sonozaki clan. Mion quietly placed her hands on the tatami mat. Wait, does this look... She's just like, <laughs> I have a gun. Like, this is like a very normal, like, cute smile. This isn't like a, oh, you're in my house now, boy. And she gave a beautifully elegant bow, as if this really were a tea ceremony, and named herself. Mion's movements were so elegant that they could cut, and we couldn't even answer her. <laughs> Is she trying to tell us that we've only ever interacted with Shion up till now? Because that's not true. All Rena and I could do was watch, baffled at her actions, which we could never imagine her, the normal her doing. Where is Oreo? What? What did Mion just say? <laughs> also, how, there's no way she could have killed Tomotaki. Like, because Tomotaki clawed out his own throat. So there's something going on there with, like, either hallucinogens or demon possession. That's really the only explanation for that one. Mion said that she would answer anything we asked. There was a strong light of resolve in her eyes. Rana and I exchanged glances. There was a mountain of things we wanted to ask Mion. However, we hesitated for a moment on what we should ask first. The first question Rena gave was extremely abstract, but it was the question everyone wanted to know right away. That was what I wanted to ask as well. Why would you do this? That didn't only go for Rika and Satoko. It went for the mayor, Takano, and Tomotake as well. I... Okay, she's behind Rika and Satoko. Maybe the mayor, not Takano and Tomotake. No, even further back, for all the incidents that had been occurring every year. For a little while, Mion couldn't respond. Right when we realized that the question was too vague and tried to put it into more concrete terms, she finally opened her mouth to speak. She spoke clearly. She spoke of a clarity that a grandmother might use when telling a story from a long time ago. I knew that. 
It's time for the info dump, I guess. Rena nodded lightly, and then shot a glance at me, asking if I did. I returned her nod. Hinamizawa was once called Onigafuchi Village. Yes. I heard all about that the night from Takano-san in the Ritual Storehouse. They firmly believe that demon blood ran through their veins, and cut off all contact with the outside world. Sounds like some demon worship stuff. They were worshipped by those in the villages at the foot of the mountains, and treated like transcendence, those capable of magic. It's like some Nephilim level stuff here. So this. The black ships arrived. The era of the samurai ended. The era of national isolation ended. And the tradition of worshipping Onigafuchi Village quickly disappeared. Those things that linger from the past were all to be detested. That was the kind of era it became. The abolition of feudal domains and the establishment of prefectures. An era had begun, seeing Japan sprinting up the stairs that were beyond their means to try and reach the same level as the rest of the world. All things in the Western style were to be extolled, while all old traditional things were to be scorned. That was the sort of era it was. So you did I know Geki Hen no Nakade. Takitsuboni ought to take Hanabira no Yoni. At to you money. Oninga Timura wa Kieta Shimata no this. At last, Japan, provoked by the great European powers colonizing countries in Asia one by one, began a policy to increase its wealth and military power so that it could stand as a global power in its own right. Conscription began, and they won war after war. The first Sino-Japanese War and the Russo-Japanese War, until the Pacific War broke out. They recklessly climbed the staircase towards modernization. It's kind of amazing how much Japan has changed over the years. Like, modern Japan and, like, Imperial Japan and World War II are, like, almost <laughs> unrecognizable. Kunan-no-jidai-o-mukai-ru-koto-ni-natta-no-deshita. Kunan-no-jidai-o-mukai-ru-koto-ni-natta-no-deshita. Hey, Hog Squeezer, how's it going? Thus began the harsh days where one would suffer unreasonable discrimination just because people knew one was from Onigafuchi. The children in the village at the foot of the mountain were taught not to go near Hinamizawa because filthy germs were rampant there. Children who had come into contact with children in Hinamizawa would cry and wail as their parents purified the spot they were touched by rubbing salt on it. One of the adults said to the children that if you got lost in Hinamizawa, you would be kidnapped by demons, cut up into pieces, and devoured. Never ever go near the terrifying village of the man-eating demons. That's what he taught them. Another said that during famine long ago, the people of Hinamizawa gathered up all the corpses they discarded into the dry riverbeds, then cooked and ate them in order to survive. Groundless stories, but set in such seriousness. Baseless slander added to baseless slander, making Onigafuchi Village's historically accurate, thrilling history all the more believable. This is really good music. Perhaps the chain of undue discrimination were as a manifestation of the people's anxiety towards the uncertain times. Of course, the story didn't end with the perspective of children. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> I've, I, it seemed like a natural point to end last night. It really did. If anyone found out that you were from Onigafuchi, you would be turned down from any job you applied for. People would even go back on engagements and marriage proposals. As for the marriages where one partner had lied about it, as soon as the truth got out, they were made to divorce. Yikes. You really don't want to build any marriage on a lie. I've heard about such discrimination towards those in small villages and civics class. 
Just because the others knew you were from a tiny hamlet, you would be subjected to every societal disadvantage there was. A modern form of bullying. Though I only memorized that because it was going to be on a test one time. I recall being suspicious about it, and unable to believe such discrimination occurred in modern Japan. This doesn't explain why you were kidnapping and killing people, though. Unless you're blaming on the demons. With that, Mion smiled for the first time, albeit in self-mockery. Even that bitterly lone war, however, finally ended in 1945. <laughs> I wonder which war that one was. Oh, yeah. I feel like, I feel like Mion is stalling for time right now. MacArthur's GHQ set to work on drastically improving mindsets, and strove for the abolition of unfair discrimination. They could feel day breaking on the dismal night that was the previous era. During the time, someone appeared who built up a fortune for a vast number of dealings in the black market. I wonder who that was! That was Mion's grandfather, the husband of the elderly current family leader, Sohei Sonazaki. Sohei didn't spend that fortune for his own pleasure either. He entrusted the entire amount to his wife, the head of the Sonozaki house. Careful! You're starting to sound like a communist there, Mion. Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, I see. With that, Himezawa came back to life, and that's how the Sonazaki family had established its current prosperity. Yeah, that would be hard to swallow. They succeeded at one business venture after another. Those who had succeeded freely supported those who followed them. The giant family of Hinamizawa, tied together with strong bonds, kept on expanding its influence. The Sonazaki family, the center of everything, would be extolled for a long time as the minds behind Hinamizawa's revitalization. Mion looked like she was honestly happy Rena had praised her. You, we heard a little bit about this from Tomotake, but then he shut up because Shion was like, that is off limits for discussion. Canned flesh? It sounded so hideous that just hearing it made me nauseous. Ew, what the F? Hinamizawa, a village in which demons lived and ate humans. They were just about to wipe away that cursed stigma. 
The light they had finally started to see in their peaceful lives grew hazy and disappeared. The shocking truth, as revealed by his former superior. The stolen provisions from the old Japanese army that had been a huge cornerstone for Hinamizawa's revival had been canned human flesh. Why were there cans like that? Wasn't Sohei just the manager of food warehouses? His superior revealed that Sohei Sonazaki did not have the job of managing the food. It had been unfair treatment, and all because of the lowliness of his origins. As a result, though, he had sa returned safely without having been sent to the front lines or being detained. Perhaps that was the only fortunate thing to happen to him. Finally, Sohei was enlisted as an assistant at a military medical institution. There, however, he found something even worse than the low, scorned, depressing customs of Onigafuchi Village in the research they were carrying out. Could that have been... well, you know. The bacterial core in old Japanese army or whatever? Bacteriological? Oh, there's no voice acting now. What could it be? I was pretty sure it was Unit 731. Oh, is that the super messed up World War II units? It was a nightmare unit that devoted itself to researching terrifying bacteriological weapons to break the deadlock in the war. That's the one! Yep! They used many innocent people as fodder for horrible human experiments. Yeah, it's super disturbing stuff. They methodically observed how many days a new strain would take to kill the victims. How many days it would be when injected. How many days it would be when swallowed. They dissected many people to find that out. Sometimes they wouldn't bother waiting until they were dead and dissected them while they were still alive. They would just strap them into centrifuges while still alive and crush them in decompression chambers while still alive. When a live human decompresses, all the holes in their body get pushed outwards and their intestines get pushed out of their anus like a snake winding out of it. I have a feeling I saw something like that on a documentary one time. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that there, there was like a small handful of things that they cut out of the console version. <laughs> Mion agreed with me, giving a faint, sad smile. It wasn't much in the way of communication, but for some reason I was happy to have it right now. The military's designs at the start of the war completely fell apart, and now a chronic food shortage broke out all over the battlefront. The food shortage led to malnutrition, and as their natural resistances lowered, the soldiers fell to one disease after another. Spirit and morale lowered as well. They wouldn't be able to maintain their forces at this rate. Apparently that's where the research started. At first, it was to find methods of delivering food to battlefields. It was very broad, and included fiends from violent methods like stealing it from citizens to survival methods like how to cook unfamiliar insects and plant life. As they were working out the details, they kept straying off course and going out of control. Until finally, they knocked down a door called Taboo. Probably not peanuts. <laughs> Look, every country has their dirty history. Like, every single one. Rena and I knew the answer without being told. So we didn't answer. So, they're彼らは人間を食材として扱う方法を研究していたのです。彼らは時には敵の、時には戦友の血肉を半ででも戦い抜くことが国に報いる究極の奉仕になる。そういう競技を大真面目に組み上げていったのです。滑稽な話ですね。祖父を人肉食いと下げ住んでおきながら、自分たちはさらにその上を行っていたのですから。祖父はいつも思っていたそうです。たとえ自分が癒やしい食人気だとしても、
どの試作品もとても好評だった。中でも醤油で煮たすき焼き風のものが一番好評だったそうで。も,もうやめてよ、みーちゃん。気分が悪くなってきた。That's funny. I read through all of that without really feeling anything. Mainly just because, well, I have studied World War II history. There is a lot more messed up stuff than that. Rena really was pale faced, and she looked like she was having difficulty continuing to sit on her knees. Mion looked like she had more to say, but she sighed lightly and stopped there. Ja, so, Mion no Ji san ga mochi kaita to you, Kanzme wa. Singi wa wakari masen. Ban nen made so hei wa, Jin niku de ari koto o hitei shi tsuke masita. Desu ga, Hinami zawa no kyuge kina fuku o netamu hitobito wa, Jin niku o utte zai o nashita kichiku to yobi. また、子供たちが生やし立てられ、石を投げつけられる時代に戻ってしまったのです。But again, why did you kidnap Rika and Satoko? The stifling silence came back. What a seriously hopeless and sad story it was. They discriminated, were discriminated against, discriminated and were discriminated against. Why must they attach worth and rank to it? Why can't they live without looking down on people? Why can't everyone enjoy life together? I didn't know. Well, study history. Toshu de Aru Soboa Aru Toki Murano Kodomotachi Koi Masta. If they throw a stone at one of you, then two of you must throw stones back. The children asked her, What if they threw stones at two of us? Of course, the answer was simple. Tadini Isio Nagaretara, Yonin de Isio. 8人に棒で覆われたら16人で追い返し30人に中傷されたなら60人で怒鳴り返す You'll eventually run out of people Finally, the children asked What if we're attacked by a thousand people? Even that answer was simple 千人に襲われたなら雛見沢の全員で立ち向かいなさいとそれは血気を促す劇のようですら That'll help the tight-knit community 祖母はその先本家当主としてだけでなく、ひなみざわの母たろうとして立ち上がったのです。It was halfway through 1955. It was a time when riots over the treaty with the U.S. were rampant, a time of battle and action. Yeah, what about. Screw the U.S., right? The people of ひなみざわ joined together and fought, treating unfair discrimination towards one as a crime against them all. It didn't matter whether that one was a child or an adult. If they heard that a child had been told off, then everyone, would, then everyone would crowd the house of the perpetrator, acting as a whole. <laughs> If they heard an adult had been treated unfairly, men and women, young and old, would all band together and stand against it. I, I both like and dislike that. I definitely like having that tight knit community around you. I don't like mob mentality, though. So, unfortunately, it sounds like they're getting a bit of both. If you meddled with people from Hinamizawa, you would be in trouble. They probably figured that they could make others think that, and then they'd win. How did you know about that? That was Shion who was around for that. I recalled how much of an impression it had left on me. That the people of Hinamizawa boldly came to my rescue, yet the people of Okinomiya averted their eyes so they wouldn't get involved. ひなみざわにも平和が戻ったもっともその平和もとても薄い川の上に乗ったものですこの百年の歴史を見れば今の平穏など揺れ返す天秤のたまたまの狭間としか言えないでしょうどうして Could I really have an opinion of such a long and difficult history when I hadn't moved here more than a year ago? Yet, I said it anyway どうしてみんなで仲良く暮らし合えないんだよ高野さんに聞いたお社様の昔話はどうなったんだよ Man and demon joined hands and lived together in harmony. Didn't お社様 remained in this world to watch over that? おとぎ話です。人と鬼は実在しても、それを調停するお社様は実在しなかった。Or maybe he is. お社様 could be a real demon. I'd actually be down for that. That would make for a pretty interesting story. それで。
A cool gust of wind blows in from outside, fluttering Mion's long, beautifully clear hair. Mion kept her refreshing smile, without answering, and didn't even change her expression. But even that became a silent answer. No, you, you don't worship other people. それが我ら I trace out the word Mion on the palm of my hand. Oh, she's right. The character for demon is in there. This is how we'll know, because Mion is the one with the tattoo. When she said that, she quietly rose and began to lay her hand on her clothing. No, I want to see that, because that actually will kind of disprove my theories that I thought it was Shion. Unless Shion got an identical tattoo as well. With just that exchange, I guessed what she meant. Most likely, somewhere on her body, there was a permanent seal, such as a tattoo or a marking, that proved she inherited the demon. Mion didn't sit back down. She smoothly opened the paper door onto her porch. A refreshing breeze began to cleanse the damp air filling the room. Mion quietly gazed out at the wide yard for quite a while. On her shoulders was something I could never imagine the normal Mion carrying. It was the heavy, heavy, truly heavy history of Hinamizawa. No, of Onigafuchi weighing down on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love how quickly we're just like, oh, let's just listen to Mion's story instead of like, Mion, you kidnapped our friends, possibly murdered them. What the butts? What kind of words could I possibly say to a Mion like that? How about you're under arrest? Rana wasn't saying anything to her either. Only the voices of the cicadas drowned out the silence. At last, after a long period of nothing, Mion murmured. Okay. Um. Are you admitting to murdering the people, or are you just admitting to, like, we, we ran them out of town? She said it all without turning around, with her back to us. At some point, her tone of voice had gone back to being the Mion we knew. あたしを捕まえてそれで放置国家の定裁が整うならそれも時代の流れかなってこの100年で一番平和な雛見沢を見ながら引退できるのはひょっとすると歴代のその時家の当主で一番の幸せなのかもしれないしミオン you killed people Mion leaned a shoulder against the paper door then slid it down and flopped on the ground it was an act of such resignation that just seeing it made me hurt inside. The numerous terrible crimes Mion had been a part of suddenly began to fade from my mind. Hey Mion, I don't care what happens after this. Can't you just try to struggle as much as you can? Try to run away? As soon as I began to think that way, Rena's ringing voice filled the room. <laughs> Undercut of her cop, Rena! Yeah, like, what the heck? I'm not the biggest fan of Satoko, but she and especially Rika did not deserve to die or be kidnapped. The sharp points of her words stabbed into my chest despite not being directed at me. Rana's words were more biting than any I had ever heard. Even now that we knew all the heavy history passing down on Mion's shoulders, she had criticized her for killing our friends. Yes! Valid! Like I said, Rena's the best! I 
リカちゃんだって。ミオン、that kills people。その役目が、サイグデンを守ることだった。So you're saying Rika committed ritual、uh, Sudoku? <laughs> I mean Sudoku. Sudoku is from Star Wars. <laughs> My chest tightened. 去年あたりから、リカちゃんが言ってたのは知ってたんだよ。サイグデンのカンヌキが重くて辛い。もっと簡単な鍵に付け替えたいって。先代の神主さんでも思いと嘆いてた代物だからねリカちゃんに辛いのは重々承知だった僕がちゃんと番をしますですからもっと軽い鍵に変えてほしいなのです I replied on the behalf of the Sonazaki family leader Ever since the strain of freak death incidents there seem to be people who are insolent towards Oyashira sama so you shouldn't replace the lock with a simpler one That said The leader of the Kimiyoshi family, old man Kimiyoshi, he. If it's that difficult for you, Rika, then I think it's okay to replace the lock, he said. The very fact that it was locked with a key was an indication of it being somewhere you mustn't enter. There's nobody bad enough to break through it and go inside, he said. Even if we were alike as leaders, we couldn't find it in, I couldn't find it in me with the old man Kimiyoshi since I owed him so much. In the end, we decided to change out the lock on the storehouse. And switched it to a really cheap and light padlock. <laughs> yeah, Rika deserved better. If they tell me that both the mayor and Rika killed themselves because they're like, we failed in our duty to keep it locked! And then Satoko is just like, I, I have nothing to live for and kills as well. Like, ugh, that's gonna be so. I, I don't wanna say that's gonna be dumb, but, like, I'm not gonna be happy with that twist. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> よくご存知のはず大丈夫なのですよこの雛見沢に鍵を開けて勝手に入ってしまう悪いことはありませんでしたが、yeah, not yet, but... move in. <笑> All right, Rika. <笑> Sobs escaped from my mouth. I thought he was having a heart attack. Something hot and wet dripped down in spades and fell onto the tatami mat. You can just say my tears. サイグデンに俗が忍び込んだという話は。It could only have been the new kid who moved in. Zokuayoni.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.Sonohino.S
私は仲間を救うべきだったのかもしれない。Yes! 私がそんなものに屈したから、あの二人を殺してしまった。I actually can't believe she's just calmly admitting to it. Like, this seems very anticlimactic. それは他でもない。私、その崎ミオンが殺したということ。私には、踏みとどまる100億の瞬間があった。でも、踏みとどまらなかった。安易に自らの役割に屈し、仲間のために戦うことを放棄してしまった。だからこれは私の罪。私が殺した。その先ミオンがこの手で殺してしまった。それは何ら変わらない。何も。Her masochistic laughter was sad. Especially because Mion boasted in club that she would turn the tables on whatever predicaments presented themselves. It was so painful. It's true, we were literally the only person she didn't attack. Well, that's because he's cute. As I looked at her surprised, Rena stuck her finger right at my forehead. That's right. Mion was so cunning that nobody could stand up to her, even in our club. If she had seriously tried to kill me, I would have been dealt with on the very first night. So many people had been sacrificed, but I was always left out in the cold. When did I first realize it? Even though people were disappearing one after the other, for some reason I had this vague belief that only I would be left alive. Mion put a finger to her lips to say Rena didn't need to talk. Mion fell silent. Rena's merciless words felt cruel, but they weren't meant to be. Maybe they were trying to lessen her good friend's pain, if only by a little. Maybe they were considerate, like she was trying to help. Yeah! That means she just killed Satoko to cover her tracks. Mion didn't open her mouth, but she smiled just a little. She killed people, Rana! Yeah, Rana's, Rana knows how to use a hatchet. She rose, scratching her head. Her face had returned entirely to that of the usual Mion. It's not seriously going to end this anticlimactically, is it? I couldn't say anything. The number of deaths Mion was involved in was just too large. So much that maybe recommending that she turn herself in was, in a way, extremely cruel. No, no, I would not. <laughs> huh? My name suddenly came up. And it looked like I was the only one surprised about that. Can we have maybe a moment alone at the detention center? I really don't want to be alone with someone who just admitted to, like, no fewer than, like, ten murders. <laughs> Yeah, 
絶対にない。Okay, m a n I've got a list of instant deal breakers in any relationship. Learning that your partner murder is a serial killer is probably number one on the list. <laughs> There was no reason for me to hesitate. m i o n had been engulfed by heavy, unopposable tradition. The one who had forced her to kill her friends with her own hands. That was me and me alone. In fact, with me cornered, it would have been okay for me, her to, to blame me. However, m i o n didn't say one word of blame. Far from it. I was guilty of the same crime, and she let me go. Amidst the fate she could not oppose, she saved me alone. Have you forgotten how she laughed evilly over the phone, although I'm pretty sure that was Shion? I didn't know whether I should be thankful for that. Thinking upon it now, I didn't know how much easier it would be. I still don't know if this is Mion or Shion that we're talking to right now, though. It seemed like it was Mion because she was trying to show us the tattoo, but we didn't technically see the tattoo. If I were to be granted the same punishment as Rika Chan and the others, the only thing I knew for sure. Was that I had an equal duty to bear the sins that m i o n shouldered. No, you don't! You didn't kill anybody in this timeline. So, when it came to m i o n s last request, there was no reason for me to hesitate. Oh, easy. This is not going to end well. When I said I didn't want it to end anticlimactic, I didn't mean like everyone is an idiot. I hate it when everyone's an idiot to make the plot advance. Rena stood up. It looked like she would keep her promise of Mion and leave. That? You're gonna kill me! How do we know Grandma Oreo is not going to be like, Renish on her own? <laughs> Shoot her. Then m i o n kills me, and then they're like, alright, to the secret passageway. And then they just like book it there. Or like they have a private helicopter or something. How the heck do we know that they're not going to do that? Or how do we know they're not going to be like, well, the jig's up anyways, we may as well kill these people because they were the ones who found us out. This is, this is stupid. Why are you doing this? I don't care if it's like, I want to be a good friend and I bear responsibility too. It's like, bruh, she killed 10 people. m i o n took Rena's hand, head and rubbed it violently like I always did. Leave the gun behind, m i o n I began to walk after m i o n who headed for the hallway. When Rena silently stopped me. I didn't know much about laws, but with as many deaths as she's been involved in, the chances of her escaping a heavy punishment seemed non existent. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a time where the death penalty is justified. m i o n might not surrender herself to justice, but instead choose to put an end to her feints herself. Rena had already thought that far ahead. Oh, that's what we're doing. Rena rubbed at her tears, which had fallen without me noticing them. I nodded and followed m i o n who had disappeared out the front door. This is not going to end well. I could clearly hear Rena sobbing from the other side of the paper door. Maybe they should have gone to church. Something hot burned down my cheeks. They were my tears. I fiercely wiped them away. This was the last time I could offer. This is the last of my time I could offer to Mion, so I absolutely didn't want to let her see my tears during it. Mion was already waiting outside the front door. That's gonna be a hard one to split up into multiple episodes.